See, I'm all about Montrevious Adams. I would do the entire episode on Mont Adams, but I know the response that it'd get. So I'm going to try something else. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also cover two other teams in town, the Penguins and Pirates, and offer daily shots on those as well. But yeah, Maud Adams is back. Two-year contract with no financial terms announced yet, but as far as I'm concerned, he can't get paid enough. I love this guy. I love what he brings to this defense. I love the stabilizing effect that he had when he first arrived in Pittsburgh, and I really loved the way he played last season, which I feel was some of the best football of his life. Now, is he a superstar or a stud or whatever? No, of course not. I'm not being a weirdo here. I just happen to admire the man's work ethic and his contributions within his own category. But you know what? If we had to look back over this past week for Omar Khan, I'd say that might have been the theme. If you think about every single acquisition that's been made, almost all of them through free agency, it's been about, hey, let's check this box and let's check it as best we can. The splash was obviously going to be Russell Wilson. Splash B was going to be Patrick Queen, which, by the way, I find funny. Reading, hearing various analysis of the Queen acquisition, a lot of people seem dumbfounded that the Steelers would go after an inside linebacker and pay that much, meaning the $41 million over three years, because it's not seen as a quote-unquote premium position in the NFL. People, it's a premium position around here, meaning they haven't had anyone filling it since Ryan Shazier. But beyond that, needed a punter. Got Cameron Johnston from Houston. Two-year deal. Needed a safety to work with Minka Fitzpatrick, really to free up Minka. Got Deshaun Elliott. Nice signing yesterday. Two years, six million. If he can do nothing more than just be remotely adequate in coverage, but take care of all the nasty stuff up front, that'll mean so much to having 39 get back on the takeaway train. Brought back a couple of pieces in free agency that they really needed to bring back. Miles Killebrew, all pro on special teams. Adam, as I just mentioned, not that it'll stop me from mentioning him again, but also look at the Deontay Johnson trade. Look, the trade in and of itself isn't great. I don't think anybody would argue that. The Steelers very clearly either A, didn't want to have him in the AFC, or B, really, really wanted to send him somewhere where the team would stink for a long time. And, you know, it's not like they haven't done that before. Ask Chase Claypool what it was like being one of the Bears. That whole volunteers, not hostages thing, I think, gets taken really seriously, in particular by the head coach. Nonetheless, not a great trade, but... Dante Jackson comes back as a not great starting corner and maybe not at all a starting corner, but someone who would give you, theoretically, options at that position. So check, 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 and check, and there's still a few more boxes that are sitting there empty. Some will get filled to everyone's satisfaction. Some won't. Some will be just left sitting there waiting, maybe. For the NFL draft, I think there's at least a possibility of that happening at the center position, for example. If the Steelers really have their eye on Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon or someone else who's up there in that class at that position, maybe that's the way they'll go. But for the most part, this follows a familiar pattern, and I don't mean Omar's, I mean Kevin Colbert's. And that is when you're lacking at a position, try to address it both through free agency and the draft. Double down on it, so to speak. I don't know that that'll be necessary at all of these, but I think it might at a bunch of them, especially something as obvious as inside linebacker. You know, Queen is in the fold now. You know, Landon Roberts is going to turn 30. We don't know about Cole Holcomb's health. I could see one more impact type inside linebacker being brought in, not at Queen's level, but 
you know, someone who can play the game, but not through the draft because there's not a lot of that in the draft. I could see a tackle being maybe ignored in free agency because this is supposed to be yet another glorious class at the tackle position. And then, since I already mentioned the Deontay trade, I mean, there are always wide receivers. And even so, this class is seen as being a step above. So while everybody seems to be right now, per my feel, clamoring for Tyler Boyd to come home, Tyler, of course, being a Clareton native who went to Pitt, but also really does feel like someone who could fill a role in this wide receiving core. That's not going to be your answer. That's not going to make up for losing Deontay. And by the way, since I heard from some of you taking issue with a remark that I made about Deontay yesterday, I'm going to seize on this opportunity to clear that up. What I said on the show was that in in Deontay's role, what you should be replacing him with is someone who can get you 10 to 12 catches a game more often than not. That, to me, is a number one wide receiver. When I mentioned Deontay in that context, I wasn't suggesting he was that guy who was getting that done. I'm not an idiot. I cover all these games. What I was suggesting was that that's what that role should be. And by the way, parenthetically, that's what Deontay's skill set should have had him doing. He didn't, obviously. I'd still love to have somebody doing that, and I'm not so sure it's a luxury. One way or another, this offseason, this week, has gotten off to a sound start for Omar and his staff in terms of checking the boxes, and in a couple of cases, checking the boxes with real wow factors. Much, much work ahead. When we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in Western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and they've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. LGKG. Today's J1Q comes from Bob, who says, DK, do you think that the now seemingly inevitable trade of Deontay Johnson was one of the reasons that the Steelers brought in Russell Wilson? I'd imagine that it's much easier to attract free agents when Wilson is your quarterback over just having Kenny Pickett on the roster. Bob, you know, I want to start this with a really general answer, and it's one that applies not just to the Steelers, not just to the NFL, but across professional sports. The idea that free agents are attracted to teams based on things other than money is the most, not just overblown, but inaccurate thing that ever gets discussed among sports fans. It's not even close to being the case. I share this with you mostly from my background in covering Major League Baseball a few years back where I had to do a lot of dealing with agents. And I would hear from them specific things that they were looking for. And bearing in mind that I was covering the Pirates, I was covering a team that didn't offer money. The Pirates would attempt to say to the free agent, well, we have this brand new state-of-the-art facility. And by the way, all the stuff that you hear about the Steelers facilities and everything else here, the Pirates are the polar opposite. They have the gold standard for absolutely anything you could want as an athlete. And it doesn't matter. Because free agents are going to go where the money is. I mean, 99.999% of the time, even the term 
hometown discount needs to be banished from the sporting lexicon. It almost never exists. Yes, you have a better chance of keeping your own free agents because you're familiar with them and they're familiar with you. A trust builds, a relationship builds, and and there's a comfort. You know, you don't want to move your family. You don't want to learn a whole new system, a whole new everything. But it still comes down to the money. You still have to pay. You still have to pay. Look at the amount of money that T.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick got. The last two really big contracts that the Steelers have done. I set Patrick Queen off to the side here. I'm talking about with their own guys. That money is pretty respectable. I didn't see any discount in there. T.J. was made the highest paid edge rusher of all time. Minka was made the highest paid safety of all time. Well, okay. What was the discount in there? They get free parking? <laughs> Maybe like a snack or two at the at the cafeteria on the side? If the Steelers want to attract, to get back to your original question, a high-grade wide receiver, there's a little bit more of a conversation, obviously, and I'm sure this is what you're partly alluding to, about the quarterback. There has to be because the receiver's living is based on whether or not the quarterback can or wants to get him the football. So if you're a really good wide receiver and you're looking around at teams and it's teams that don't have quarterbacks, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. So that's the second part of my response. But I'll take these two responses, put them together, and assure you that if the Steelers really wanted to have an ace wide receiver come in and sign here. The main thing they'd have to do is pony up. That's all. That's all. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to have another one of these Monday. Maybe, maybe, unless I'm still mad at the handful of you who keep talking about how I say wide receiver. What am I saying that's unusual about wide receiver? That's how everybody in football says it. I don't even know what you mean by this. Wide receiver. That's the position. Wide receiver. I'll see you Monday. 